Can you sleep when the wind blows? Yeah. That's how our goal is to be able to say, yes, I can sleep when the wind blows. Can you sleep when the wind blows? We remember the story that we based it on about a, a farmer that was running the farm and didn't have no help. I'll give you a quick scenario of it. Didn't have no help. He needed a, someone to come in and help him out. He hired a man that didn't know how to do anything on the farm. And the farmer asked him, well, what can you do? He said, I can sleep when the wind blows. Yes, sir. A couple of weeks, a couple of weeks later, a storm came. The farmer jumped up and thought that he had to do everything, didn't he? He ran around the barn looking at him and said, Lord, have mercy, I got to give me some real help. Because that man said he didn't know how to do nothing. And he ran outside and the man had taken care of everything. And he thought about it. He said, hey, no wonder he said I can sleep when the wind blows. When do you do what God has told you to do? Yes, and that you are obedient in his word, yes. in his comfort, then you will know that you're able to sleep. Yes, Amen. When the wind blows. Yes, Amen. Amen. First King, I'm going to talk this morning from the signs of self-destruction. The signs of self-destruction, even in a personal life or by a nation, there are different signs of self-destruction. First King 16 tells about a man, 16, First King 16, 29, tells about a man named Ahab in the 38th year. He had been signed the king of Israel. And the Bible says in 1 Kings 16, 30, Now Ahab did evil in the sight of the Lord more than all those who were before him. Verse 32 tells us what he did. He, and he set up an altar for Baal in the temple of Baal. Ain't that some? And in chapter 17, verse 1, it tells us about a man named Elijah. Elijah stood before Ahab and told him this, 17.1, As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there should not be no dew or rain these years except at my word. Mm -hmm. Amen. Signs of self-destruction. It's, it's voting season. You see where our ex-governor has bowed out the voting. He's no longer political in the, in the race. For the White House, he didn't have enough money. And the polls were now. It's voting season. Trump is at the top of the list on one hand. And, and Hillary is slowly declining. It's voting season. Even right here, we, we have, what, 16, 17 maybe candidates for mayor. Everyone is voting, and we're hearing a a lot of promises as to what people think and what they are going to do and how they are going to, to make a difference in our lives. And sometimes it becomes very discouraging because it seems like on one hand it's positive, but on the other hand it's full of negativity. On, on, on one hand, we are happy this morning because gas is under $2. It's under $2. But on the other hand, we're sad because a lot of individuals are losing their jobs because the gas is going down. It, 
on one hand is positive, but on the other hand it's negative. So where does where do we get a chance to feel good? Because it seems like soon we feel all right, something happens. Today is the beginning of football season. Got up this morning, we found out Moses Malone was found dead. Ain't that something? So on the day of football season, we're, we're happy, but we found out one of the legends of this town is found dead. And so it, it makes you sad. But there are some signs. Let me give you some stages of, 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 of the signs of self-destruction. We, we need to know what to look for in a, in a person's life or in a nation's life as to signs of self-destruction. Number one, the first sign of a person or a nation self-destruction is rejection of God's word. Rejections of God's word. We need to be weary of individuals and a nation that just goes against willingly and knowingly the word of God. They don't, they don't care what God says or what the Bible says or how God feels about an issue or a situation. They have decided that they're going to do what they're going to do, and nobody can tell them what to do. Mama used to say a hard head. <laughs> Makes a what? <laughs> you already know, don't you? But, but when a person get our nation get to the point where they just, just willingly and knowingly reject God's word, they're on the verge. Of self destruction. Whenever we get to a point where we are trying to counsel individuals in their personal life and we go to them with the word of God and they tell us they don't care what the Bible says or they don't care how God feels or they tell us that, that that's, that's old school, this is new school. I want to let you know, Lane, they're on the verge of self destruction. Because you cannot willingly reject God's word and, and still be positive and move forward Amen. in life. Because God doesn't need your permission to do anything. Right. He, he doesn't need Reverend Wiley to say, okay, I agree with that. It really doesn't matter. That's why it really doesn't matter that you are the politics or religion because what God says stands. And God is tough enough and bad enough that he's, he, what he says, stand regardless whether you believe it or not. Counseling a young girl this week, I told her, don't, 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 don't play with fire. Mm -hmm. Don't, 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 don't play with uh, being fire. Don't, don't play with the devil. Mm -hmm. Now you, you can't, you can't play with the devil. Because let me tell you, the devil has conquered a whole lot of individuals that are more powerful or knew the Lord better than you can. Mm -hmm. Just because sometimes we think that we're able to quote the word of God and then do what we want to do. Oh no, God is a mighty God. And whenever we find an individual or a nation uh, uh, to the point where they don't care what God says about what's going to happen. We're in trouble. Beware of politicians that, that don't believe in God. Don't go to church. Don't think nothing about God. Say, well, God is a personal thing. Yes, he's a personal God, but yet he's also a universal God. What do you believe about God? That's important. It's important that, that we know what we believe about God. Yes, sir. As I'm so happy to see Sister Love and Sister Davis and Sister Hick and, 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 and those individuals that are that, 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 that on the front pew because they're the fountain down foundation of this church. 
They're here morning, morning after morning for Sunday school because they know what God is able to do. Amen. Amen. Yeah, sister, people like Sister Ross and others that have that have reared their children, that have reared grandchildren and great grandchildren right now. It, but it doesn't mean just because optical after optical after optical seem to set them back, they just keep on smiling. Mm -hmm. Sister Ross came in this morning and said, How you doing, Grandma? Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's some things that have gone on this week that she could have come in mad. But she knows that God is a good God. Amen. And that you have to stand on the word of God. Yes. The first stage or the first sign of self-destruction is the fact that a person rejects God's word. The second stage or the second sign is that they begin to accept all immorality. They begin to accept all immorality. They say, well, I'm going to do what I'm going to do, but it doesn't matter what other folks will do. Yes, it does matter what, what other folks do. God's word stands on his own. I'm going to tell you, what's right is right, and what's wrong is wrong. Now, you live and do what you want to do. But what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. And one wrong or one right don't make nothing something wrong or don't make it right. It's just wrong is wrong. It's just right is right. And God don't need you to, and just because a person decides that they're going to do something wrong does not make it right. Just because even the preacher decides they're going to do something wrong doesn't make it right. Wrong is wrong and right is right. I'm talking about whether well, it's a little white lie or a big black lie. A lie is a what? Lie. I'm talking about it don't make no never mind whether you tell or whether you cheat a little or you cheat a lot. A cheater is a what? All right then. It doesn't make no difference if you steal a steal from a bank or you steal from Fiesta. A thief is a what? Thief. thief. And let me tell you, if a person is lie, they'll show steel. All right. That's it. All they'll show steel. Right. <laughs> so, so, so what we have to we have to understand that we do not accept immorality. Amen. Wrong is wrong and right is right. Now, people do what they want to do, but when you personal or nation begin to accept immorality, then huh? We're on the verge of self-destruction. The young lady now that's in the, what other state she's in that says that she doesn't believe in homosexuality, uh, uh, getting married. Well, personally, she needs to quit her job. You can't do that from public, public opinion. You, you can't hold a public job and, and still go against the law of the land because God endorses the law of the land. Now, we can have our physical and our moral faults, but let me tell you, if you're working on somebody else's job, you can't do and believe and say what you want to say. I'm talking about we got we to twist it. It's all right to believe one way, but if you're working on another person's job, don't, you do not have the right to do what you want to do and to say what you want to say. Now, if she had started her own company, it would be a whole lot different, wouldn't it? So we, we, we have to really, we have to really, really, really begin to look at this thing and say, you know what? It doesn't take many to be right. But she's right on one hand, whenever we begin to accept all type of immorality, we're heading for destruction. But let me tell you, when we start talking about immorality and accepting all time immorality, we have to believe that God is still a God that will take care of that too. God deals over the just as well as the unjust. He deals over the just as, as well as the unjust. You know what I'm saying? So be, be careful, and when you start talking about immorality, Let's be careful how we're judging. 
And that before we start to judge individuals, let's make sure that we're right our own self. Because sometimes we, can, we need to straighten up some of the things that we're doing our own self before we're able to look out and decide what somebody else is doing. So when we talk about this immorality, make sure on a personal basis that our life is clean and that we are doing what God has told us to do before we. And then what happens is once you start straightening up your life, your own life, sometimes you get so involved with that, you ain't got time to tell nobody else what, what God said. Somebody said it this way, I, I spent 24, 24 hours. I spent 12 hours taking care of my own and 12 hours taking care out of yours. And by the time I get through with that, I'm busy, busy, busy. But when we start talking about acceptance of morality, when the world and people start to accept it and doesn't go to the Bible, then we're in trouble. Any question, any question that we won't answer, the answer is in the Bible. The problem comes in when we are not acceptant of the answer. But is that? Is that? Is that? And whether you want to follow it or not, that's your choice. But is that? And whether we accept it or not as a nation or as a person or individual, doesn't mean that it's not there. It's there. The danger come in when we begin to accept it. Let me tell you something, church. You know why, why David was a man after God's own heart? David was a soldier. Sister Hicks, David was, 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 a, was a mean soldier. David, David, David would, 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 with, with, with Sister, Sister, Sister Watson, they would, would no sooner look at you as kill you. he kill you. He looked up there one day and saw a man's wife and said, hey, I got to have her. The man got in the way. He said, hey, I'm going to kill him. Put him on a soldier in front of the front line had her husband killed. But you know why he was a man after God's own heart? Because in the 51st verse, 51st chapter of Psalms, 51st book of Psalms, he said, create in me a clean heart, God. Wash me white as snow. Acceptance of morality doesn't mean that you are righteous and that you're doing everything right. It means that you know that you are living and doing wrong and you steady go to God and ask him, wash me clean as snow. The problem comes in when we try to cover it up and try to justify it. We cannot justify wrong. But the reason why David was a man of the God's own heart, because every time he would sin, he would go to God and ask him, God, I know that I need, I know I may do it again, but please forgive me and deliver me. That's where we are now. One of the, one of the custodians told me the other day at work, he said, I'm going to join church after I get myself right. I say, you'll never join. You'll never join. First of all, you ain't gonna never get yourself right. Although if you try to do it without God, you won't even get halfway. I'm telling you, the, 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 the problem is that even in the church, the church is nothing but a hospital. But even those that have come on Sunday, they are steady crying week after week after week. Lord, wash me. Clean me. I know I'm evil. I know I'm a devil. I know I have a problem with hatred. I know I'm doing this. I know I'm doing that. I have not accepted that to the point of, of, the, of, of giving up, Lord. Lord, deliver me. Show me the way. Conquer me, Lord. Conquer me. 
conquer me, conquer me. But when a person begins or a nation begins to give up and start to just accept it, that's when they're on the verge of destruction. Mama used to tell us, it's no harm in falling down. The harm is not, is not in getting up. It's, it's, not, it's nothing wrong with, with making a mistake because we've all made them. And I, I tell you the truth, if they would have caught some of the mistakes I do, I might be doing life right now, Brother Carl. I've been in some situations and some circumstances, I scared my own self. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, Lord have mercy. What would have happened if when we were growing up, they would have had social media? What would have happened? What would have happened? You know, cameras catch everything now. But there's some things that people are convicted of that I used to do. I'm like, Lord, thank you, Mark, because they didn't have that back then. I'm so glad they didn't, they didn't have what they thought they called, uh, uh, when they put everything on 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 the on, 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 uh, Facebook and uh, what the other thing they call what the students use all the time, Instagram. When I go to school now, and, and something happened, and if they start a fight or something right there, me and they didn't know I'd be stopping the fight. People come, Mr. Wild, I got you on Instagram. I'm talking about they walk around with their cameras open up, looking for stuff, looking for stuff. You can't even use the bathroom outside no more. People might be taking a picture of you. <laughs> this mess things up, didn't it? Mess things up, didn't it? It just mess things up. Because they don't have to have your permission. They say you know you on Facebook. Using the restroom. Look at this preacher using the restroom. It mess everything up, didn't it? It's everything up. You, you can't do nothing no more. You can't say nothing no more. You got to be careful what you say to folks. They might have a camera in their pocket. Huh? It used to be that we used to, at Sibby Church, we used to be scared of talking to members because we thought that they were going to record it and send it to the bishop. Well, they recorded now and emailed them. <laughs> talking about, before we get out of church, look what your pastor said. She said it right now. And then they call this thing called Stream Live. Everything you say is live. That's what we're dealing with. But the acceptance of immorality, give me five more minutes, I'm setting it up. The third thing, the third stage of seeing a person on the verge of destruction is satanic worship. No, we have a problem with people worshiping the devil. I'm gonna tell you something, Lane. The devil is for real. We got individuals that worship, Sister Hicks, Brother Hicks, the devil. Tracy, they, they, they worship the devil. They, they, they know they're wrong. They, they worship the devil. I mean, they, they, what that man do on, on Antoine, right there on Antoine? He killed all his friends. They were homeless together. You know, homeless folks, they sit around. And then when I got done, he, he hit him in the head and burned up that burning body. Oh, that's 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 satanic, and we need to know that a person can be what they saw what that thing they used to have a long time ago, carry and the ecstasy. You remember that they put the ecstasy out years ago? That's for real. You can be invaded by the devil. Let me give you some consequences. Let me hurt y'all. Let me give you some consequences of. Of, 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 of self-destruction. Let me give you some consequences. Number one, irrational fears. Irrational fear just gets, gets fear everything. Number two, and I'm rushing through this, unexplained nervousness. Can't sleep at night. Uh-huh. You need a pill to wake up, a pill to go to sleep. You just need all kinds of pills. Consequences, illogical thinking. Lord, where did you, boy, where you been all your life thinking like that? How does a 23 year old get to the point where he hates the world and shoots everybody? <coughs> illogical thinking. And then the fourth one is this right here inability to respond to God. 
Believe me, church, sometimes we get so far out there that we don't have the ability to get back. Daddy used to always tell me, he said, he said, son, don't, don't get so far out there <laughs> well, well, you can't get back to God. A lot of time our children and our family members have gotten so far out there that, that they, they can't respond to God. I tell anybody, the word shift to work is night shift. Night, night shift draws sin. If a, person, if a person is married, night shift draws. It, it just draws you. Especially when you out there at night and you're able to do what you want to do and go where you want to go. It draws you. It's like, you don't need to be here. Go do this. When I counsel couples, I tell them, if you can, the first 10, 15 years of your marriage, both of y'all work day shift. You can be at home together at night. Night, night. night shift will mess up a marriage. Mess up, mess up a marriage. It, it, it will mess up a marriage. For one thing, one is working night, one is working night. You like shift passes the night. You're not able to communicate. You don't know what she's thinking. You don't know what she's thinking. In the first 10 years, you need you be to be able to communicate with one another. Night shift will draw. And, 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 and mess up a marriage. Inability to respond to God. And before you know it, and counseling, I tell men, men are weak. You're weak. You're weak. We're weak. We're, we're, we're weak to other sexes. We're, we're weak. We think we're strong. Counseling the other day, I said, baby, don't give your husband away to somebody else. She told me, she said, now, my, my husband get to the point now, Reverend, when he get out of work, he like to go shoot poo. I said, you know what you need to do? You need to go with him. My mom used to tell my sisters, wherever your husband go, you need to be in the car with him. I told her, baby, and he, he said, said, Reverend, he asked me all the time to go with him. I said, baby, get up. Get up. And ride down to the pool hall with him. Because let me tell you, they got some now that specialize in taking other folks' husbands. That's their job. They specialize in it. That's what they do for a living. They don't want them. They just specialize. And before you know it, that man ain't got out there. And he, then he can't respond unto God. We talking about real life. Real life. Counseling the young lady right now. She passed 50. She, she, she's dressing now like she never dressed before. Baby, what's wrong? Reverend, I have the need. I, I need to have somebody other than him to tell me I look good. I said, don't flirt with him. The devil will destroy. And it will get you out there where you're not able to come back unto God. You mess your marriage up, you mess your life up, and you mess your children up. That's a solution. Let me give you two solutions. Let me close it out with this. Two solutions. First John 1 John 1.9, you need to confess, confess specific involvement in what you've been in. That's the answer. First John 1 John 1.9, what does First John 1.9 1, 1, say? Somebody read it. What does it say? First John 1.9, 1, 1, this, this is good counseling. Because our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. There you go. That's the answer. And the second answer is to claim the blood in the name of the Lord Jesus. Revelation 12, 1. We have families, we have friends, we have nation that are on the verge of self-destruction. We have children that are on the verge of self-destruction. You need to be able to look at the signs and see when your child is at that point. 
and what to do. Father God, right now we pray that you would give us strength, Lord, to see the signs of our nation and listen to our politicians and see our friends and our children, our family members self-destructing and be able to counsel with them and talk with them about coming back and being with God. And that the sin is not in making the mistake, but the sin is realizing that you haven't made a mistake, that you have made a mistake, and now you're not now trying to correct it. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen.